Former President Trump has promised to make a contribution to the legal fund supporting the rioters charged in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Trump made the pledge at a fundraiser on behalf of those defendants, which was hosted at his Bedminster, New Jersey golf club by the Patriot Freedom Project, a group founded by family members of those charged. Trump's speech was filled with misinformation and conspiracy theories about the insurrection. Jonathan Lemire, uh, your thoughts? I mean, at this point, you think it can't get more twisted, but this is pretty twisted. Yeah, the bottom just keeps getting lower. Why not? I mean, he's called January 6th a beautiful day. He has pro promised to pardon most of the January 6th rioters. He has now uh, suggested he'll make a contribution to the Legal Defense Fund. And, of course, let's not forget, he has appeared with a January 6th choir convict uh, because that's Donald Trump right now, Richard Haas. Um, wow. So convict choir. Yeah. A convict choir, um, which we should never lose sight of. We should bring it up at least once a week. Uh, this is where we are right now with January 6th. And it's not just Trump, though. Some of the other Republicans are saying they do the same thing. Not the, legal not the contribution to the Legal Defense Fund, but DeSantis has said he might pardon some of them. Others have as well. There's been some, others have said not. Pence said he probably wouldn't. Nikki Haley said she probably wouldn't either. But just show us if January 6th continues to be normalized, like what... Could that mean for that 2024 election? That's a worrisome trend. Just one side thing before I answer that. The idea that Donald Trump would contribute to the Legal Defense Fund, I'm not a lawyer, but these are people who might be called on to testify against him. We still haven't had the indictments dealing with January 6th. So he would potentially be paying money to people who could be called upon by the Justice Department to testify against him. The only flaw with that, Richard, is that we're actually assuming that Donald Trump's going to give away any of his own money. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Look, the idea of somehow normalizing or regularizing January, that, that, that to me is the single scariest thing, because that, what is that? That is the use of violence for political purposes by non-state actors that, well, that happens to be the textbook definition of terrorism. Look, I spent three years as the U.S. envoy to Northern Ireland. Before that, you had three decades of the Troubles. What were the Troubles? Sporadic, decentralized political violence by all these groups, militias, whatever you want to call them, provisional IRA, loyalist groups, and so forth. What scares me, Jonathan, if January 6th ever gets normalized in this country, we could have the American version of the Troubles, mm. where we could have assassinations. Yeah. We could have political rallies disrupted by people going into them, beating up people on, on the uh, other side. What January 6th should teach us is it can happen here. We are not somehow so exceptional, so different. Plus, we're a country awash in guns. It's also very easy to go into any you know, hardware store and buy the ingredients of explosives. So we shouldn't fool ourselves. The fact that the Republican Party and others are not prepared to delegitimize this, every religious leader, every religious leader on Friday, Saturday, Sundays ought to be denouncing this sort of thing. There can be no space in American democracy for this sort of thing, or there won't be American democracy.